hell.exe, written by Christian Martin. It is night on the street. White wall tires tear across wet asphalt. Classic convertible, all curves and chrome. This world is black and white. Driving is the detective, but his features are obscured by the brim of his trilby. Tires squeal, convertible slides around a corner, racing through a larger than life 1940s city. Outside the warehouse, the detective smashes through an iron gate. Outside the warehouse loading dock, the convertible skids to a halt in front of four thugs. They drop their contraband and move to surround. Doors open, the detective steps out. Polished shoes, long coat, crisp tie. We finally see his face. 26, Latino, thin, not your average private eye hero. How'd you know? There are many criminals in this city that leave size 14 footprints. <laughs> Clever. Uh, you might have found us, but they ain't gonna never find you. The thugs attack, but the detective moves like a champ, bobbing and weaving. When each jab connects, there's a burst of color in this grayscale world. Once the thugs are all on the floor, the detective grabs the big thug by his collar. Where is she? The big thug points to a crate. The detective rips off the top of the large box, reaches in, and lifts out a blonde bombshell in a sequin dress. Detective, oh, I knew you'd find me. Let's get you out of here. He lowers her into his convertible. They take off, charge through the city as swing jazz swells. Thump, thump. Distant thuds under the music. Did you hear that? Just the beating of my heart. Thump, 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 thump. It is definitely not a heartbeat. The detective realizes what it is. Oh, shit. What's wrong, stud? The world freezes in place. Everything but the detective. A floating window appears in front of him. A pause menu. The detective reaches up as if to remove a helmet that isn't there and disappears. We back out, ascending past the flickering neon sign for Ned's and over rooftops until we see a grand cityscape, which shifts from black and white to color, from the idealized past to the gritty present. This is hell, California. We zoom in, descending, below the rooftops, past the flickering neon sign for the den into a strip mall. There's a large man banging on the door of the den. It's a VR arcade. Thump, thump, thump. The door flies open, revealing Jave Castello. Same face as the detective, but none of the style or confidence. Instead, slouchy and wreathed in dark anxiety. Yo, I've been out here knocking for 10 minutes. You're open, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, sorry about, sorry about that. I, I was on lunch. At 7.30? Sure. Yo, I wanna play, man. Of course, of course. And I better get a discount for waiting. I, I, I can do that, I can do that. The big customer pushes inside. Later, Inside the den, electronic dance music thumps in the small place lit by LED strips. Virtual reality terminals line the walls. Only one is in use by the big customer. A screen shows the black and white NAR world, the detective mirroring the big customer's movements. Past the terminals, Javi sits at the front desk, staring intensely into the light of a monitor. The screen shows photos of an airport, a giant blue horse statue, a painting of a soldier stabbing a sword into a flying dove. Javi clicks through, eyes flitting, until his phone rings. He sees the caller and hesitates. Hello? Javi, thank God. What's going on? I need you. Can you come tomorrow? I don't know. I'm, 
after the last time? Ravi, please. This is an emergency. Okay, I can do it. Thank you. See me at the usual time. The phone clicks. Javi lays his head to the desk and groans. Bump, a solid thud from the back. Yo? The big customer in the VR terminal jukes side to side, nearly yanking the cords out of his headset. He throws an elbow that punches a hole in the wall. Yo! We cut to Javi's apartment later. Javi enters the messy efficiency, frazzled. In the ashtray on his coffee table, he finds the tiniest nib of the edge of a joint, but it crumbles between his fingers. <sighs> of course. He drops onto the bed in his bedroom and stares at the ceiling, exhausted, but unable to relax. Then a smile as he gets an idea. He messes with his phone and a video plays. A woman wearing a sexy Japanese schoolgirl school girl uniform with pigtails leans in. Having trouble sleeping? She starts waving her hands close in front of the camera in odd hypnotic patterns. Don't worry, senpai. I'll take care of you. Close your eyes. Javi finally closes his eyes. The tension leaves him. The next morning, Javi sits in the driver's seat of his junker car, eyes closed on the edge of hyperventilating. He takes a deep breath. You can do this, Javi. Stay strong. They smell weakness. He smacks his cheeks in a quick rhythm before exiting and then strides bravely past the sign for Hell High School. Outside, teenagers eye Javi as he passes. He immediately comes to a group of jocks, all wearing red and black devil's letterman jackets, and all taller than Javi. He smiles, confidence cracking, and walks around them. He passes a dark corner where three girls aggressively make out with each other. Javi pretends not to notice. He passes doors to one of the buildings blocked by police caution tape. Two students pose in front for a selfie. The hell? Inside the front office, Javi enters rubbing his eyes as he approaches the front desk. The receptionist whips her attention to Javi. What do you need? Um, hello. I am Javier Castello, uh, substitute uh, Miss Colburn called me in. You're late. She's waiting for you in her office. Thanks. Javi finds Miss Colburn in her office. She's the principal of Hell High, sincere and high strung, talking to a schlubby cop. Javi, finally. Thank goodness. This is Sheriff Mattingly. Nice to meet you. Uh, what happened? I saw the caution tape. There was a murder last night. What? Yes, we found Mr. Kerr in his classroom. Um... Stabbed. In the neck. Pencil right through the carotid artery. Oh my god. That's why I called you so suddenly last night. We need you to cover Mr. Kerr's class. Why is the school even open? Shouldn't you close down for an investigation? Normally we would, absolutely. But today is the first day of state testing. Can't mess with state testing. <laughs> Even I know that. But don't worry. Mr. Kerr's class isn't testing until tomorrow. I just need you to keep an eye on them. A close eye. If you notice anything suspicious, let us know. Avi reacts to that. Just in case, of course. More than anything, I need you to be empathetic. Those children are going through a lot right now. It's important to give them room to grieve. We cut to inside the classroom shortly after. Hey, hey, guys, who am I? <laughs> Corden, tall and sassy with a swoopy fringe, pretends to have a pencil stuck in his neck. He flops onto a desk and twitches, gurgling as the other kids laugh. 
yo, can, can you not? Corden drops the pencil and stands up. Can you not? Not what? Exactly. Corden turns his back on Javi like a badass. Millennials, right? His friends, Ariel and Ez, chuckle. Ariel is stocky and cocky with long braids. Ez is a small and scrappy with a buzzed head. All right, everyone, uh, as you know. A hand shoots up. It belongs to Bruno on the spectrum, a short kid with keen eyes. Yes? Can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> Not right now. <clears throat> As you know, uh, due to unfortunate circumstances, I got called in last minute, so there's no lesson prepared. Um, I'm thinking there has to be some videos we can watch to pass the time, just to take it easy today. Um, let me know if you need anything. The counselor is available, you know, if you're having a hard time. Nobody's listening. Javi searches the drawers of the teacher's desk and finds two DVDs. The first is a copy of Minions. Nope. The second is titled Sex and Abstinence for Youths. Cut to later, the lights are out as Minions plays. Kids huddle in groups throughout the room, none of them watching. Javi sits bored behind the desk. He walks over to a window. Wind blows through the palm trees outside. He turns and starts finding Bruno and a friend real close behind him. Bruno's friend is Dylan self-assured, but jittery. Uh, hello. Um, what are your names again? I'm Dylan. He's Bruno. We need to go to the bathroom. At the same time? Yes. Uh, just, just don't take long. They quickly leave. Javi hears a light whimper. It's a girl in the corner, quietly crying, alone. He approaches carefully. Hey, It'll be okay. They're, they're going to find whoever did that to Mr. Kerr. Mr. Kerr was a douche. You're not crying about him? She shakes her head. Then what's wrong? Nobody will do it with me on TikTok. Do you think the Oracle could help? <sighs> I wouldn't count on it. Avi backs away. He sees Ez, Ariel, and Corden chatting about something. Told you it'd be easy. We're in and they've got no idea. Then it's time to run a test. What are you guys talking about? The kids exchange looks. A video game. As an Ariel smirk at that. Oh, cool. I play games. Which one? You wouldn't know it. It's not a Harry Potter game. <laughs> what? Hey, what house are you? I'm guessing Hufflepuff. I get it. A millennial joke. Nice. Any other sick burns that you would have workshopping in this group chat? The kids look at each other, surprised, silent. Guess not. Remember, kitten, I've already done all this. I've dealt with the real problems in the real world now. It, it takes a lot more than a rude teenager to hurt my feelings. Come to me when you have your own phone and your mom doesn't buy you. Ariel's eyes go hard. Javi walks back to his desk and sits. A smile grows. Later in the afternoon, outside hell high, Javi leaves at the end of the day, impatient teenagers whizzing past as he drags his feet. In his junker car, Javi drops down into the driver's seat with a big yawn. He twists the key but the engine doesn't turn over. He tries again, holds it, and the engine starts. Need caffeine. On the streets, Javi drives through the south side of hell, passes a banner announcing the Founders Day celebration coming up soon. He drives into Founders Square. It's a park in front of the old mission, surrounded by shops and restaurants. A large stage is halfway through construction on the park lawn. Outside of Angelica's, Javi's car pulls into the lot. It's an indie rockabilly cafe diner. The facade is painted in patterns of red, white, and green. 
A sign in the front says, free Wi-Fi. A woman is exiting just as he approaches the door. When they see each other, they both pause. She's Estrella, Javi's ex, trans, edgy, and eternally tired. Hey, Javi. Uh, hi. Javi considers what to say. He comes up blank. Estrella, unsurprised, heads for her car. See you around. Yeah. Javi enters on Angel Angelica's, approaches the counter. The place is chill. A few patrons sit in corners on laptops. A mural of the Virgin Mary done in drippy spray paint covers one wall. Tattooed hands smack down in front of Javi. They belong to Angelica herself. Eyes equal parts savvy and kind. Hair equal parts black and pink. Hey, Angelica. Hey, on the way. What can I get you? Red eye, please. Iced. Another day at the school. After that one kid barfed on you, I thought you weren't going back. Uh, I need the money. Mm, I feel ya. Want anything else? Uh, mole burrito. Ooh, and a slice of chai slices if you have it. And Helica turns and yells to the kitchen behind her. Papi, mole burrito, especial for mi amigo. And Helica turns back to Javi, leans forward on the counter. Any news about that treasure hole? When you said people have been trying to dig up forever? Oh, the money pit on Oak Island? Mm, I, I don't follow that much anymore. What's the new obsession then? Ever been to Denver Airport? I don't think so. They say it was built above a secret New World Order base. Oh shit, why? It's covered in occult imagery and there's a 30 foot statue of a demonic blue horse in the front. For real? Yeah, it's called Blucifer. Creepy as fuck and cursed. A part of it actually fell off during construction in 2006 and killed its creator. No way. And that's just a start. Inside the airport, there are these weird murals. As Angelica becomes more and more engrossed in Javi's conspiracy theories, we pull back and fade. Later, Javi sits at a table in the back, puts down his coffee, takes out his laptop. After turning on, a notice pops up in the bottom of the screen, automatically connected to Angelica's free Wi-Fi. His cup is full of coffee. Then it's half full, then it's empty. There's a loud slurp as he reaches the bottom of his drink. Javi gets up to place his glass on the counter. On the way back, he sees three familiar faces, Ariel, Ez, and Corden, in a booth using heavily stickered laptops. He gives them a chin nod as if to say, so, Ariel rolls her eyes. Unsurprised, Javi returns to his table. Almost immediately, a small window appears on his screen. It reads, attention, operating system update needed. Javi's pointer slides and clicks the update button. Back at his apartment at night on the TV screen, 20 something YouTubers with perfect teeth look straight at the camera. Hey guys, it's me again. Welcome to the channel. In today's episode of Interweb Investigations, we're going to talk about crystal skulls. But Javi's barely paying attention. He's on his phone. On the screen, he searches for Elite Custom PS5 Controller. The results are a collection of colorful, high-quality video game controllers, prices starting at $150. You're probably thinking, I already know all about skulls. On the screen, Javi types in a text to Principal Coburn. But you're wrong. What if I told you there was a skull discovered 50 years ago that you never heard of? I work tomorrow at the den, but I can sub again Thursday if you need me. The phone vibrates and Javi grabs it. To ensure the safety of our students, we will no longer be employing you. What, did I do something wrong? 
Principal Coburn simply replies with a link. Javi opens it to find screenshots of his own search history. Oh no. He scrolls through seeing many average but still embarrassing porn terms. And of course, sexy schoolgirl ASMR. The cherry on top is a bad picture of him mid blink with several voluptuous anime schoolgirls photoshopped around him. The text below reads, you really want this weirdo teaching your kids? And then another text pops. You're no longer allowed at Hell High School. If I see you within 100 feet of the campus, I will call the police. He drops his phone and buries his face in his hands. Later in the apartment, intense EDM music plays as an energy drink slams onto Javi's desk beside two other empty cans. Javi types frantically. On computer screen, typing, what to do if hacked? Websites on the topic flash by to the beat. Another search, types of hacks. More sites pop up, Wikipedia, cybersecurity.net, whitehat.com. Javi wipes sweat from his forehead, chugs more energy drink. Images come faster and faster as fingers clack across the backlit keyboard. Search for brute force attack, another empty energy drink. Search for man in the middle. Javi yawns, but shakes it off. Search IP spoofing. Our view of the screen blurs. Javi rubs his eyes, grabs his phone, and the time reads 7.24 a.m. What? He pulls blackout curtains from his window and sees daylight. Fuck. Javi stumbles away from his computer, gets in his car and drives to the streets of hell, struggling to keep his eyes open. He dials a number on his phone and puts it on speaker. This is the Hell Police Department. How can I help you? Hi, my name is Javier Castello. I I'm calling to report that I've been hacked. Okay, how did you learn about this? Um, my boss sent me a link. My entire search history was posted online. Was any other sensitive personal information revealed? Social security number, bank account details, your home address? No. Has anything been stolen from you? Um, no, but, but my boss fired me for being, for my job as a sub substitute. Why would they fire you? Was there criminal activity leaked? Uh, no, no. Uh, I listened to some ASMR to help me sleep sometimes and this one. Uh, what is ASMR? Uh, it's when someone talks really soft to you or makes light tapping or scraping noises that, you know, make you feel tingles in your head. It's, it, it's meant to be relaxing. Like they'll tell you nice things. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, why exactly would this get you fired? Well, like, Sometimes uh, ASMR people role play characters and one that I listen to does this sexy schoolgirl thing. Are you referring to child pornography? No, she's an adult. Some people think it's sexual, but it, it's not. It's, it's just comforting, you know? And how old is this person? I'm not sure actually. All right. <clears throat> Back to this job you were fired from, is it a full-time or a part-time job? Javi hangs up. Fucking cops. Javi's parked beside the only other car in a strip mall. It's a shiny 1970s Chevrolet Corvette Stingray parked across two spots. He knows what that means. I really don't need this right now. Javi enters the den hesitantly and finds a man leaning against the front desk. It's Anton, 
the owner of the den, wearing a shiny watch and dripping with cocky douche energy. Anton, hey. We need to talk. Come on. Anton leads him to one of the VR terminals and motions to the hole in the wall. What the fuck is this? Oh, that. Um, a customer got too excited the other night. Well, who the hell is paying for it? Uh, he, he already did. Here. Javi goes to the counter, takes out some cash. Anton counts. Okay, then. That's just lucky he didn't damage my equipment. Anton takes most of the money, folds it up, and puts it in his pocket. He hands the rest to Javi. Why would you need to patch it? I want that hole covered today. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. And next time, fucking call me. And with that, Anton's out the door. Next time, I'll fucking call your mom. He chuckles to himself, exhausted, and drops into the chair behind the desk. <sighs> Later, the parking lot contains a few more cars now, minus the Corvette. The sun is higher in the sky. A customer pulls off their VR headset to glare at Javi, hammering a square of rough plywood over the hole. Javi takes the next nail from his mouth and bang. Hey, do you mind? I'm almost, I'm almost done. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, sorry. The annoyed customer returns to their game. Javi turns to find two teenagers right behind him. It's crooked. Can I help you? We, we want to play games. Wait. Oh, fuck. I know you. You're that sub, right? The one whose shit got leaked? I, I mean, yeah, I was hacked. They fired you for being a creep, so now you're here patching walls? Javi pushes past them towards the front counter. <laughs> Yo, I said we want to play game. He stops, turns back slowly. Fifteen dollars an hour. Later, we see Javi drop into his chair behind the front desk, burying his face in his hands. He stays like that for a long moment. Then, with renewed energy, he pulls out his phone. On the phone, he opens his contact lists. His thumb hesitates over one name, Estrella. And then he presses. Hey, I need your help. He immediately regrets sending that text, but the phone vibrates. I saw what happened. Sorry. What should I do? Change passwords, use two-factor authentication, run anti-malware software, turn firewalls on, and use a VPN. For all machines, phone included. Yeah, no shit. Already done. I need some special advice. The fuck does that mean? Some hacker advice. I know you're still into that shit. Wow. Okay. My special hacker advice is to move on. Be more careful in the future. Don't save your fucking search history. I'm going to call you. It rings three times. He's about to give up when... Yeah. I really need your help to figure this out. Please, do you have any idea who could have done this? A hacker ex-girlfriend looking for revenge? <laughs> could be the mailman. Somebody's abuela. This is hell, Hav. Everyone's side hustle is running scams. <sighs> have you used unsecure Wi-Fi recently? I don't think so. Well, were you prompted to download any updates before the hack? Yeah, earlier that day. Probably a fake update. Fuck. I need to find this asshole. <laughs> Why? What's your plan even if you do? Exposing them. I want to see how they like their shit going in public. Can't argue with that. Okay, listen, I can't help you, but I know someone who might. Great. Who is it? Ever heard of the Oracle? 
Only rumors from the kids. She has an ear on everything. A serious social media savant. Where do I find her? You're not gonna like it. We cut to the next morning. Javi's in his car, takes a deep breath, eyes closed. Just talk to the Oracle, get out. He slaps his cheeks and exits the car. He's outside Hell High School. Javi hides behind the Hell High School sign. He makes sure the coast is clear before slinking onto the campus. Two cheerleaders approach and he ducks behind a bush. Guess who he's following now? Haley? No, Janelle. Oh my God, that bitch. They pass. Javi moves to a door and peeks before entering. Inside the, high, the Hell High School, the hall is empty. Javi accelerates down, but skids to a stop and hugs the wall after hearing someone around the corner. We're not putting students back in there right now. We're going to use that room for storage until next year. <laughs> Ms. Coburn and a teacher round the corner where Javi was. We cut to inside a classroom. The lights are off. Javi catches his breath beside the door as Miss Coburn and the teacher walk past. Javi turns to find he's not alone. It's Dylan and Bruno, hunched behind the teacher's desk, going through paperwork. Their eyes meet. Uh, we were just... I didn't see you. You didn't see me. Understood. Javi leaves. Outside the back of the school, shortly after, Javi approaches a collection of temporary buildings. He comes to two buff guys in skin-tight shirts. I'm looking for the Oracle. They perk up. They've been waiting all day for this. If you want to talk to her, you must pass our test. Answer our riddles to prove you're better than the rest. A sailor walks through the desert wearing a flotation vest. Javi pulls out some cash. That works, too. Himbo number two takes the money. Sushi tonight, bro. They high five. Inside a health trailer, empty student desks fill the room. Health posters on the walls depict scientific cross-sections of genitalia. The Oracle, hyper-confident and vibing, sits behind a teacher's desk with her feet up. A laptop, a tablet, and three phones are splayed in front of her, all signed in to different social media accounts with photos of different people. This guy wants to talk to you. The Oracle scans Javi. Thank you, Himbo number one. You may go. Himbo number one leaves them. I'm a new student here, uh, looking for information I heard you could help. Facts. Not the first thing you said. Obviously, you're no student. But I do know all that happens here in Hell High. That's why I know you, Javier Castello, canceled substitute teacher. Javi moves to flee. I won't snitch on you. So he stays. What else do you know about me? You're no pedo. Into some pretty vanilla weeb shit, honestly. Not half as bad as what most of the teachers are up to. But when the sharks smell blood, death by a thousand memes. Memes? No way. Bet. She pushes a phone across the desk. On the screen, a text-only meme reads, Mr. Costello covers class. Me, I know the answer. Mr. Costello, good. Come whisper it real soft in my ear. I need to find out who hacked me. Say less. I can assist for a price. I don't have that much money. Don't want money. I'm looking at a free pass to the den. Parentals refuse to let me convert the guest room into a VR room, despite the fact we haven't had guests in over a year. I mean, I, I don't own the place, but if I'm there, my boss isn't. You can play as much as you want. That'll suffice. 
So was there a hacker at the school? Oh, several. But I have a solid hunch which ones were responsible for your particular pain. A little hacker coven called Ace. Where can I find them? It's second lunch right now, so they should be vaping by the gym. Thank you. Javi rushes out. Outside of the school, he pulls his hood over his head and tries to be inconspicuous. As he passes kids chatting and eating lunch outside, a teacher sees him. Hey, hey, put your hood down, please. Javi ignores it and keeps walking. He stops at a corner of the gym, peeks around, and finds Ariel, Corden, and Ez passing a vape back and forth. The recognition hits Javi hard. Of course it was them. Corden blows a large pink smoke ring, then shoots several smaller rings through the center of it. <clears throat> Fucking show off. I can teach you. He blows a ring into Ez's face and she lunges at him. Teach yourself to suck a dick. Already did. Ariel snatches the vape from Corden. So, you ready for Operation Yeehaw? Ariel thinks, blasting smoke from her nostrils. Close. The network's still ours. Yep. Checked yesterday. Passes unchanged. Ink Queen has no idea we have the keys. What's the next step? Javi leans forward, enticed, but a hand grabs his shoulder. I told you to put your hood down. Hold on. I recognize you. Javi breaks away, flees into the churning students. Hey! Shortly after, Javi jumps in his junker, turns the keys, and zooms off. Inside Angelica, as Javi approaches the counter, he waves at Angelica, but she doesn't wave back. Hey, what's up? She motions him away from a customer sitting at the corner, at the counter. What's up? Shit. Yeah, I, I figured out who did it, though. These asshole teenage hackers. Have you noticed anything weird with your Wi-Fi? Maybe change your admin password just in case? Yeah. What? No, no, no. It's not like that. This, is, this isn't some conspiracy theory. Shit, it's real. Listen, a lot of kids from the school hang out here. I can't have you come in anymore. You're kidding. I'm not. Sorry. He leaves stunned and hurt. He bursts into his apartment and paces, angry. Later, he's on the edge of his couch, full attention on his phone. Another stylized montage as Javi creates a new Instagram account called Yeet Boy with the picture of a random teenager. He can't find an account for Ariel, but does for Ez and Corden. Javi spends time lurking their accounts, finding no meaningful clues only aesthetic blurry selfies and videos of their pets being stupid. Come on, where are you going next? Then a post from Corden grabs his attention. The logo for the game Venoir. Description reads, Tonight's the night, jumping back into Rain City for the new heist. Think you can beat us to the Diamond Dove? Come to server North America West 4 and see. That'll have to do. Javi grabs his keys and hurries out the door. Outside the den at night, it's closed, but Javi lets himself in. He goes straight to the back to a door with a sign above that reads Cyber Chamber in glowing black light paint. Inside the Cyber Chamber, synthwave outrun music plays as Javi wades through a layer of fog. He comes to a wall arrayed with what looks like pieces of high-tech armor. He suits up. Decked out, Javi approaches the object in the center of the room, a pedestal supporting a shallow bowl with a harness above. This is an omnidirectional treadmill. Javi steps on and fastens, lowers the headset over his eyes. Everything goes black until... <laughs> An expanding light like the Big Bang. Myriad colors melt past, but quickly resolve into shapes. 
in the futuristic city hub at night in the VR, Javi looks around at a shimmering metropolis of glass and light and energy. A sexy anime character, Glitchy Stutter walks towards him. Floating above the avatar is the name Blaze Starking 23. Hey, bro, hey, what's up? Javi turns away, opens a floating menu. Blaze Star King 23's virtual hand moves through the menu, waving in Javi's face. Yo! Javi manages to select Venoir and cycles through servers to find the one Ace is playing on. He teleports. In a hallway in Venoir, back to black and white, back as the detective. He moves to the door at the end of the hall and opens to the inside of a speakeasy. There's a roaring party, cocktail, champagne, cigars everywhere. Some play craps, some poker. The blonde bombshell stands on a stage, crooning Amy Winehouse's Back to Black. Javi moves through, scanning. He spots three figures in dark trench coats at the back. Their faces are recognizable as digital recreations of Ez, Corden, and Ariel. Javi ducks into cover, opens the menu, hits appearance, and sets his avatar's face to random. The detective's features shift until he looks nothing like himself. When he closes his menu, the teens are gone, but he catches the nearby door shutting and moves to follow. Outside, it's a walkway at night. Lightning crashes. Wind whips at the detective's coat. This is no building. It's a dirigible hovering high over the city. A massive balloon creaks and shifts overhead. Javi spots the three moving. He sneaks after them. We cut away to the inside of the cyber changer. It's reality time. In the real world, Javi crouches awkwardly in the harness while sliding his feet across the omnidirectional treadmill. We go back to the Venoir. Javi peeks from behind a crate, but the only people he sees are two guards standing before a door. Then movement above the guards, Corden in the shadows. He drops, stabbing a guard in the throat. The other one reaches for his gun, but Corden takes him down too, as an Ariel join Corden at the door. How are you so good at Lots of practice. Something clicks in Javi's head. Did Corden kill Mr. Kerr? Javi stumbles and hits something. What was that? Corden, check it out. We'll let ourselves in. Ed starts picking the lock as Corden heads towards Javi, but when Corden checks behind the crate, he finds nothing. Javi's below, hanging from a pipe, dangling over the clouds. We cut to inside the storage hold shortly after. Javi moves between rows of shelves with crates and containers stacked to the ceiling, each covered in stamps and labels from all over the world. Ace is a few rows over. Ez opens a crate, pulls out a golden idol, which she throws to the floor. How are we supposed to find the dove in all of this? We'll know it when we see it, but keep your head up. Other squads might be after it too. Sure hope so. It'd make things more interesting. Don't go popping off. This is a dry run, remember? We'll have to stay cool and collected on the big day. If we can manage this, the real thing will be cake. The teenagers move out of earshot just as the conversation gets interesting. Javi follows and immediately comes on two other players sneaking through just like him. There's a pause. Then they draw their guns. Javi bolts as he, the shots whiz past. He hides. The new players split to search for him. When one gets close, he downs them with an uppercut. Javi scans the room. There, far across, Javi spots Ace opening a heavy-duty crate and pulling out a dove carved from solid diamond. Pew! Another shot sparks by their head. Another shot sparks by his head. Javi runs for the hackers with shorts. Javi runs for the hackers with shots exploding inches away. 
He's close, but Ariel topples a stacked shelf in front of him. He sees a gap, but hesitates and misses his chance. He's forced to slow down and crawl through the wreckage. As he does, a bullet catches him in the ass. Inside the cyber chamber, in reality, in the real world, Javi's on his hands and knees. His vest buzzes, startling him. Shit. Inside the storage hold, in VR, Javi pushes past the fallen shelf and stumbles for the exit. Outside the side platform, Ace moves faster on the curved edge of the dirigible, causing Javi to lose sight of them. He jogs to catch up and comes to a dead end. They're gone. He thinks, then leans over the railing to see past where the walkway ends. A rope ladder hangs there. Javi climbs over the railing and stretches for the ladder. In reality, in the cyber chamber, Javi mimes climbing like a complete doofus in real life. But outside the side of the dirigible, in VR, Javi climbs up the balloon, buffeted by the wind. There's a shrill whistle from above. He stops, slowly looks up to see Ariel holding the top of the ladder in one hand and a large knife in the other. Corden waves at him. Thunder booms, rain starts to pour. Thought you could let us do all the hard work and swipe the treasure at the last minute. Clever, but we're not stupid. Oh, shit. What is it? I forgot about Mason's party. Fuck, that's tonight. Fine. We finish the quest and bounce. She cuts the ladder. Javi plummets through rain and mist, past windows of tall buildings, and then splat. Inside the cyber chamber, in reality, Javi tears off his headset breathing heavy. Who the fuck is Mason? Disconnecting himself from the treadmill harness is fiddly, takes off the VR gear, it's even more frustrating, and he flails at it. Inside the den shortly after, Javi's on his phone. On the screen, he's doing an Instagram search for Nace Mason. There he is. Javi opens the account at Big Boy Mason. The most recent post is a video of Mason meeting friends in front of his house. Shit's gonna be lit! Hey, better see you here tonight, bitches! Javi rewinds it, pauses, zooms in with his fingers. A sign on the street reads Fulton Avenue. He heads for the door. We see him inside his car at night, Javi checking the GPS on his phone as he drives slowly down a neighborhood street. He turns onto Fulton Avenue. Javi parks across the street from Mason's house. Music thumps from the place. Javi looks around as he approaches the front door. Before he can touch the door, it swings open. Two drunk, giggling teenage girls pour out. Oh, hi. The hell are you? My name's John. John, you don't look like a teenager. You know Mason? Yes, I do. Ew, leave old John alone. Don't be a creep, old John. If you're a creep, I'll kick you. The girls stumble down the sidewalk. Javi looks himself over, then does his best to act like a teenager. He adopts even more of a slouch and pulls the drawstrings of his hoodie to cinch the hood around his head. And then he enters Mason's house. It's completely packed with teenagers, dancing, drinking, making out. He passes a group at a coffee table, some of them crushing pills to snort, while others dip tampons into a vodka bottle. He checks the kitchen, the bedrooms, the backyard, doesn't find the hackers anywhere. He eventually settles in the kitchen, sipping a white claw, trying to act natural. Javi absently takes two chocolates off the counter and pops them into his mouth. And then he realizes what they are as he chews. Shit. Later, 
trap thumps. Javi dances while chugging a beer among a pulsating crowd. His, he's crossfaded. Later, outside in the backyard by the pool, he finally sees the three hackers talking to Mason. Javi heads towards them, and a familiar e-boy takes notice. It's loud with the music and the kids screaming and jumping into the pool, so Javi has to risk getting close. Who wants a gummy? Oh, me! Corden pilots a drone in her direction, a small container hangs below it from wires. Open your mouth. Here it comes. He hits a button and a small gummy drops from the container below the drone into the girl's mouth. Kids cheer. Oh, that's so sick. This is nothing. You can program in a path and it'll fly on its own. So Ariel, haven't seen you and your crew around much lately. We've been busy. Making moves, right? I heard I've been working on something big. Illicit shit, maybe. Don't know what you mean. We're perfectly innocent kids. Uh Uh-huh, sure. E-girl brings a tray of jello shots and passes them out. Oh, shots for thoughts! Ariel raises her phone to take a selfie. The back cover is a stylized design of a melting asexual flag. Whoosh, E-boy snatches the hood off Javi's head. Check it out, the pedo sub. The kid closes ranks around Javi. Can't fucking believe it. What are you doing at my house, Cuck? I know you hacked me, and I know there's more. You're connected to Mr. Kerr's murder somehow, and I'm going to expose it all. Cool story, Psycho. We hacked you for fun. That's it. Guess it doesn't take more than a rude teenager to hurt your feelings after all. Javi loses it and rushes Ariel. They struggle before Mason pulls him away. Mason slugs Javi in the jaw. Others join, punching and kicking as Javi covers up. Outside Mason's house, minutes later, Mason and a mob of teens throw Javi out. I see you again. You won't be walking away on God. Javi limps to his car. Then he slumps into the driver's seat and watches until the kids go back in the house. Then he smirks. He pulls something from his pocket. It's Ariel's phone. On the empty road later on, Javi's junker drives, listing back and forth. He pulls up to a dumpy RV, gets out of his car, and shuffles towards the door. It opens before he even gets there. What are you? Fuck, Javi, what happened? Some teenagers kicked my ass. <coughs> Inside Estrella's RV, she wipes at Javi's face and reacts to the smell of his breath. Oh, you drove here drunk? What the fuck? That was stupid. All of it. What if they'd called the cops? It was worth the risk. (laughs) Javi takes out Ariel's phone. Is that? I need you to crack it. God damn it, you stole a kid's phone? They're scammers. Please, I need your help. They're planning something bigger than what they did to me. Javi, this is too far. This isn't you, what are you doing? You've done this. You've done worse, how can you judge me? You're better than me. At least I thought so. I'm going to have to do what I have to do. All the answers I need are on that phone. Please, just one last thing. Estrella gives in. She takes the phone and messes with it. It's too late. What? They wiped it remotely. The phone is a brick. Useless. And Javi punches the wall. Fuck! Hey, that's enough. What is your problem? Drop this shit. Move on. I can't. Why not? I lost my job. Bullshit. You hated that job. What's the real reason? Explain it to me. I've had enough, okay? I worked two shitty-ass jobs with two shitty-ass bosses, both idiots. 
but had to jump through hoops for them just to afford a shitty ass apartment. Now, some fucking kids are going to take that away from me and humiliate me in front of the whole city? Fuck that. (laughs) Oh, you're a mess. Worse than I thought. (sighs) Fuck you. And Javi storms out. You can't control the world. You can only control yourself. Javi gets in his car and slams the door. He charges off, spraying gravel. His eyes burn. In the morning, birds flit between the palm trees. Good morning. Welcome back to Hell Talk on 66.6, the Sticks FM. Boy, do we have a do- boy, do we have a doozy for you today. Sharon, why don't you go ahead and break down the news for everyone? Wow, I'll do my best. The Hell Police Department just announced that the murder investigation of Hell High School teacher Philip Kerr, who was killed by having a freaking pencil stabbed through his neck, has ended. We see Javi's car in a parking lot, parked with the radio on. Apparently, it wasn't a murder at all. A female student at the school killed Mr. Kerr in self-defense when the teacher assaulted her. Yes, Mr. Kerr had been grooming and sexually assaulting underage students for years, and treasure trove of A treasure trove of evidence was found, screenshots of disturbing conversations between Mr. Kerr and students, as well as a giant spreadsheet Kerr used to track progress with his victims. Javi sits staring off like a zombie. He looks like shit, battered from the night before. What a creep. But that's not all. You won't believe how this came to light. HPD detectives didn't solve this case. Two students did. That's right. Sophomore students Bruno Sheffield and Dylan Lee did their own investigation and beat the detectives to the truth. Incredible. What I want to know, though, is how this scumbag got away with it for so long. There's definitely going to be some hard questions for a hell high principal. Janet Coke. Javi kills the radio. Mr. Kerr really was a douche. Javi stands outside the parking lot looking at Anton's stingray. He's inter- he enters the den to find Anton at the desk, fuming. Come here, get over here. Look at this. The screen shows security footage of Javi playing VR while a customer bangs on the door outside. I was like, what the fuck? Have you been closing to play games on the clock? Uh, I don't know what to say. Get out. Get, get, you're, you're fired. Javi leaves. He goes to the car, gets in, turns the key. The engine grumbles and doesn't start. He tries again. It's the same. Javi smacks the wheel. He tries it again. The engine putters out. It's going nowhere. Javi gets out. He calmly walks to a nearby trash can, picks it up, and throws it at his car. Trash flies everywhere. When the trash can bounces off, he throws it again, cracking the windshield. Anton comes out of the den. Oh, what the hell are you doing? Are you crazy? Javi looks at Anton, then throws the can at his stingray. Yo, I'll kill you. Anton comes at him, and Javi runs away. On the street later, Javi shuffles down the center of the road alone. The rage in his face slowly melts and subsides to shame. A car honks and he has to get out of the street. Javi stares at a gutter, tears running. An unhoused man approaches him. Hey man, are are, are you, you okay? I'm a disaster. I belong there. Look, I, I know things get hard. You wanna talk? Javi looks at the man and sees something behind him. What? Javi pushes past, wiping at his face. Javi stumbles, then jogs, then runs. He skids to a stop, and we see Founders Day celebration in full swing. Thousands of people decked out in Old West attire partying in Founders Square. Operation Yeehaw. There's a ratty, cheap cowboy hat on the ground. 
Javi picks it up, brushes it off, and puts it on. His posture straightens, and his eyes alight with firm purpose. He wades into the crowd. Outside the town square, Javi passes vendors selling everything from fried snacks to bottles of fine Bordeaux and light up souvenirs. On a large center stage, folklorico dancers stomp and twirl. There's even a mechanical bull. Riding the bull, we glimpse little Goofy, a surfer bro party animal, one of the urchins from the episode Hell on the Beach. Outside Angelica's, it's the busiest day of the year. A line of customers extends outside. Javis's phone vibrates. Phone notification reads, automatically connected to Angelica's free Wi-Fi. A prompt pops up. He's looking at it. New update available. Would you like to download now? Uh, no. Javi pushes past the line to get inside the diner. What the hell? Inside, he finds Angelica behind the counter, efficiently churning through orders. Angelica, we need to talk. Hey. I know. I'll leave right now. Just hear me out. Those hackers I mentioned before, they're going to... Don't make me throw you out. Javi leaves in a huff. Outside, he looks around, frustrated. There's no sign of the hackers. He wanders towards the alley between Angelica's and a bookstore. In the alley, Javi turns the corner, comes upon a group of three Western bandits, faces covered by bandanas, huddled around a small electronic box, plugged into an outlet on the wall. The bandits rise slowly, spread out, eyes flitting back and forth. It's them. Everyone stands dead still, tension thicker than smoke. An announcer can be heard over the speakers in the square. Thank you everyone for coming to the 142nd annual Founders Day celebration. It's finally time for us to announce this year's host. Javi looks at Ez, Ez looks at Corden, Corden looks at Ariel, Ariel looks back at Javi. I present to you one of hell's brightest stars, Lucy Jacobs. Bang! A blast causes Javi to start and look back at cannons raining confetti in Founders Square. The kids all scatter. Javi freezes, unsure who to chase. Ariel and Corden quickly disappear, leaving Ez as the only option. Javi takes off after her. Ez weaves deftly through the crowd as Javi scrambles. She flits through a gap in a parade procession. Through the same gap, Javi runs into a blue painted horse. It rears up, waving hooves in his face. Javi skirts around the animal as its rider struggles at the reins. Then Javi catches sight of Ez climbing a ladder to the roof of a shop. He almost follows her up, but stops. That didn't go well last time. He pushes through the crowd back towards Angelica's. He's back in the alley at the box again. What is that thing? He picks it up, looks it over. Hold on. He uses his phone to check nearby Wi-Fi signals. And Helica's Wi-Fi is full strength. Javi walks to the alley edge. The signal drops down one tick. He comes back and stomps that box to pieces. Checks the phone. The signal strength has dropped by half. Wi-Fi boosters. Javi walks out front of Angelica's, looks at the throngs of people. Extending the signal so they can do what they did to me, to everyone. He checks his phone again. The signal is definitely stronger. He looks at Angelica's, confused. He's farther from the building than before. A few steps further away, and the signal bumps up again. So he checks the surrounding area, annoyed by all of the drunken revelers in his way, but able to use the signal strength to see how hot or cold he is. He finds an identical box plugged into a nearby building and smashes that one as well. But the signal's not gone quite yet. Another. He walks back and forth in a grid, constantly buffeted by the crowd. 
He eventually hones in on a corner where two old brick buildings meet. But there's no electronic box. Yet there is a box made of cardboard with wires trailing out from under it. Javi lifts the cardboard box to find yet another Wi-Fi booster and smashes it. Now he checks the signal strength on his phone. It's dead. Javi takes a deep breath as it sinks in. He's won. You haven't won yet. Javi spins to find all three members of Ace. They look frustrated, but not defeated. Javi checks the signal again. It's still dead. You're bluff. Then the signal returns. Just one bar, but then two bars, and then three. Javi looks around. He clocks an approaching drone flying 15 feet over the crowd, the same one from the party. As it passes and moves away, Javi sees the signal weaken. The kids exchange nervous looks. Javi takes off after the drone. The kids chase him. Corden quickly gives up. It's not like he can reach it. The drone leads Javi behind the main stage. He looks around, but there's nothing tall enough for him to get to the drone. Javi frantically grabs a stuffed pony from a young cowboy and throws it at the drone. It bounces off. Mr. Saddlepants! Ace watches, amused. Javi spots one of the confetti cannons. It's a big tube and grabs it. He aims it up as the drone comes back around. What is he doing? The drone is in Javi's sight. There's no trigger or switch on this thing. So Javi fiddles with the cables. Nothing happens at first. And then, bang! Javi falls back as the cannon fires a sparkling cloud. The drone drops. The propellers are jammed. It skids away from the crowd to an edge of the square used for staging supplies. No way. Javi takes off for the fallen drone. So do Ez and Ariel. In the inverse of the events of the VR heist, Javi pushes a stack of kegs in their way and slides under a table. Reaching the drone first, he scoops it up. That's it? You're done? Ez and Ariel back away. Corden catches up and stands by them. Why do all this shit? You're young, with a future. Why run scams? Want to know a scam? This whole city's a scam. This whole country, all stolen. And what future do we have? To be like you, grinding ourselves down, satisfied with crumbs and billionaires' leftovers? That hits Javi like a brick. If no one's willing to share power with us, we'll take it. And there's no better place to do it than this celebration of colonization. So you're just gonna steal from hundreds of innocent people? No one is innocent. Javi considers that for a moment, then smashes the drone. The teens slump, disappointed. They slip away into the crowd. Javi lets his victory wash over him. Then he notices something in the drone wreckage. It's a flash drive, unmarked. He snatches it and stows it in his pocket. Little Goofy is walking by and stops. Hey, dog. Looks like you need to get cowboy twisted. He hands Javi a cup shaped like a cowboy boot. Javi raises the cup to say cheers. Thanks. Saw what you did. Javi gets worried. Then little Goofy kicks the broken drone. Screw robots, am I right? Fucking T-1000, Google, Facebook, big brother ass bitch. Uh, yeah. It is night, and Javi arrives home, drunk, exhausted, and covered in confetti. But there's an energy about him now. He drops onto the couch. Something's uncomfortable. He reaches into his back pocket and retrieves the USB drive. He plugs it into his PC and opens it. One file reads, bar dot. Inside are tons of folders each titled with a person's name. He clicks a random one, George Hayward. It contains address, social security number, password for email and bank accounts, and social media profiles. 
Then he searches for a particular name. It doesn't take long to find. And Helica Rees, same thing. Every piece of private info you'd need. Fuck. Javi backs out, selects the parent file. His finger moves to the delete key, but stops and hovers just above. The signal flickers and fragments, and the signal cuts. The end.